Hey everyone, this is Vicki at Messy Table Studio here today on behalf of the Facebook group Art Joy is Sharing. Right now, Art Joy is Sharing for the month of June has been doing ATC a day cards. And this is the last, I think, in the series. Yeah. So the content today is about handmade paper, which I didn't think I had any of until I went fooling around in some drawers and found papyrus paper. Right, what I'm trying to, what I'm showing you in there is what I started out thinking I was going to use. And I ended up not using what you're seeing me do right now because I got so aggravated that I was like, nope, not doing it. I just, I'm just not feeling it. I don't really want to do it. So those are from Sizzix. They're leaf shapes. There's three thinlets that come in there and a folder that does the embossing. And if I could remember what they're called, I would tell you. Let me go over here and see if I can see it. Switchlets. So the switchlets, I, I ran them through the cuddle bug like 50 times trying to find the right sandwich. Couldn't figure it out. Would not go through the cuddle bug no matter what I did. Then I got the um, big kick and tried it with that and did several different variations and ended up doing so many layers. I just, it was like, it was like the princess and the pea. I mean, it just was stacked and stacked and stacked and stacked. And finally I got it to go through. So here I am explaining how this works. Um, that is the embossing folder. First you do this, the thinlets, you cut those out. Then you center your leaf onto the um, embossing folder. Then you send it through the machine and it puts the, um, the stuff, the veins of the leaves are embossed onto your leaf. I was so excited about doing it. It was the first time I've ever used it. I've learned a lesson. Never try something new on a video because it will never go well. <laughs> so um, I decided to use the papyrus paper because it was the only handmade paper I think I have. And I found it, it was very flimsy. So I took a piece of cardstock I had in my uh, scraps and glued it onto the back of the papyrus. I was so scared it wasn't going to fit. I used the two and a half by three and a half, rounded the corners, and I was lucky it fits in the tin on both sides. So I started out wanting to put that lovely leaf on there that I embossed, cut out, embossed, and then I did some dry brushing of silver, uh, what do you call it? Silver, oh, what is it? Silver rub and buff. And I liked it, but I would have had to cut some off the leaf for it to fit on the two and a half by three and a half because it's a little wider. So I fooled around with it for about an hour and finally just gave up. So then I thought, well, let me try something different. So I went to another source and decided that I wanted to do watercolor, something brighter, smaller that I would not have to cut the sides off of. So here I am explaining to you the leaf fits inside. So I have like, I think I used four leaves, five leaves, four or five, uh, that's three, four, I used five leaves, leaves. Um, and then I stacked them on there, trying to figure out how I want to glue them on there. So that's what I'm doing is just doing a pre-placement. I decided I really like it. And when I flipped it over, I discovered the card was red on the back. And I thought, let me try the red. Oh, no, don't like the red. It'll be green. That was jelly printed paper that I just took um, thinlets that I had and I cut them out. This is my folder where I put um, all my collage fodder and uh, fodder things in. And I'm showing you where I got the paper from. And it was in that side right there. It was jelly printed green on one side, red on the other. Then I cut the thinlets um, in a graduated size. So all the sizes from that package of thinlets that I use is in that pocket. Here I'm showing you that I did it with different kinds of paper and put stamps on top of the paper and so on and so forth. I'm just going through the book showing you what's in the book. And I have two of those books. One that's for handmade collage fodder and the other one for um, collage ephemera. 
So now I think what I'm going to do is glue it down. Finally, after fooling around with this ATC for about two hours. <laughs> Who knew that a little teeny card would take so long? So I'm putting glue on the back of the red side. And I'm going to glue that onto the papyrus. You know, this is the first time I've ever used papyrus. And the stuff did stick to it. It did a great job sticking to the, um, the paper sticking to it. So I was very pleased that it was something the glue would adhere to because I, I'd never used it before, never glued on it before, never cut it before. I just was saving it for a special thing, and I don't know why. I think that's one of the silliest things we do. We save it for someday, and then someday never comes. Right now I'm going to glue the leaves on. And I'm trying to, I'm talking to myself. Now, how did I lay that on there? I got to make sure I get the colors in the same order that I showed in the video a few minutes ago. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just couldn't seem to get it together today. It's just today's one of those days where my mind is someplace else. I have an obligation that I need to fill and I am just not feeling it. I'm lucky that it came together at the end, but I struggled more than half a day trying to figure out how to make this work. I know others are like me that they'll do something, place it, take it off, start with something new, and then you've got to circle back around to what you started with. You go, okay, that's good enough. And then there's other days of brilliance where you're just like hot, on fire, and you can do no misplacement. Well, today was not my day. <laughs> I think the aggravation level went up when I fooled around with the, um, the cuddle bug and the big hick trying to get that sandwich right so I could use the um, embossing folder. It's kind of thick on the, on the end where it folds in half and it just was not going through those machines very well. That started me down the aggravation tour. <laughs> All right, so I'm done putting these together. And as I'm, uh, while I was being aggravated, I need to just take a little breather. I went to Pinterest and I looked up ATCs on Pinterest and there was an idea on there. And I'm going to incorporate that in on this card in a second. All right, here I am. I have the, the uh, I think there's 24 in that little case. And I scaled down my jewelry findings because I used to have a business where I made paper bead jewelry. So I had findings and um, I whittled them down to the ones I really liked. And then in that upper left corner that I'm pointing to, those are little tiny silver leaves. And I just love them. So I thought I would use them on my card. The, uh, the green thing in the left on the left hand side of the screen is, I think it's, Lennon book binding thread or a thread for jewelry. I'm not really sure what it's used for. I use it for book binding. Um, and I'm going to use that next. And it has four strands. And I decided four strands was too, too thick to put through the eyes of those little leaves. So I'm going to cut it. Then I'm going to split it into sections two and two. And I'm reading off of there what the stuff is, and I still didn't figure it out, but I think it's linen. It's not waxed. So I'm spitting all over that thing, <laughs> thinking I'm threading the needle, trying to get it through that little hole in that leaf. It's not going to work because it's too big. So now here's where I'm fooling around trying to split it into from four to two. Um, threads like you know like you did DMC in the days we used to cross stitch so this is a four ply basically and I want it to go to two one was too skinny four was too much to go through the hole so I figured eh, we'll split the difference it's two and I am fumbling around like crazy with it I cannot get this stuff undone uh, 
I am struggling. Finally, I get it done. And I pull a little too hard and it hung up for a second towards the bottom. There you go. Just, you know, follow those scales, jerk it around. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to wrap this around the card. I think I did it two or three times, but I need to have enough on the end so I can tie it in a knot around the card. So I'm going to tie the knot. I'm going to put one of the threads underneath the bulk of it, pull it up, and then tie the knot. This is where you need a third hand. I find it a little bit tricky to tie knots that stay tight on the object when you're doing two hands. All right, so I like that. I decide that's going to work. Now I'm doing the spit. <laughs> I'm trying to get it wet so that I can stick it through the little hole on the leaf. I did not want a thread needle, and it probably would have been easier if I threaded a needle and stuck it right through there. You know me. Like I said in previous videos, I never do anything the easy way. And I'm talking to it and begging it to go through that hole. <laughs> and I'm adding more liquid to the end of the stuff, and I decided that I can't see anything. So I did turn on the light above me so I could see what I was doing. And yes, there was a glare, but I was going blind. Voila. I got it on. I was so excited. I went ahead and did the second one because I figured maybe the luck will hold when I can get them both on. And we have to wet the end of the thread again, like a couple times. And I'm begging it to go in there for a second time. Come on, you know you want to go in there. Come on. Finally. Nope. Okay, I'm going to spit on the end a little bit more. <laughs> I should have used a thread needle. I, I should have used a needle, but... I was already aggravated and I thought, I'm not dragging out one more thing to do this. This is my second time to film this. So I was already at the saturation point. So I was like, okay, that's it. This better work. So now I'm going to tie a knot so that the little leaf stays on the, the thread. It's a little bit tricky. And I thought about making a bow, and then I thought, no, I don't want to take it out, take those things off to tie the bow to put them back on again. Uh, no, I'm not doing it. So they're getting a knot. That's as good as it's going to get. And I'm still fumbling around trying to tie knots in it to make sure it doesn't fall off the end. Mind you, I do that twice. <laughs> And then am I going to cut this now? No, I'm going to, am I going to tie it again? Yeah, I think I decide to do yet another knot. I'm hemming and hauling around. Yep, going to do another knot. Like three wasn't enough. <laughs> I think this is the most time consuming part of the whole thing is tying the silly knots. All right, that's number one. And I'm so proud of myself that it dangles. <laughs> I had a victory over a piece of thread. Yep, it's been that kind of day. So then I resort to tweezers. I've had it. We're trying to dig around for the thread. So now I reach for the tweezers. I'm at the end of my thread. <laughs> and I decide the thread's going to help me make this go faster. No, not really. 
I am still fumbling with it. I am all fingers today. I think I tie it in a knot two times on this one. And maybe I'll use the... So all I'm going to do, I guess, is just hold the tweezers in my hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're for security of some reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When I look at this, I think, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? Now we're going to cut it. And they dangle. And I was so excited. And I turned the light off. And it's done. Doesn't even look anything like what it was in my head when I started. Not that there was a lot there. But I was just thinking about using the, the papyrus paper and making something with that. Had not a clue. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. This is hashtag AJOS ATC a day 2022. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.